Welcome to a Council of Black Belts. I'm Sheehan Scotty Phillips, and I hold the current ranking of 8th Don, and I am Nidai Soki, second generation, head of family, Ayataru. Now will be the moderator of this episode, entitled Justice. What is a Council of Black Belts? It is simply what the name implies. A group of black belts from various martial arts styles coming together to openly discuss various topics in and around the martial arts. In addition, it is an open and honest discussion, not only in martial arts studies and or instruction, but how to incorporate the martial arts into one's daily life. Our topic of discussion today is justice. Wikipedia defines justice as follows. Justice is a concept on ethics and law that means that people behave in a way that is fair, equal, and balanced for everyone. Governments, and especially the police and courts, see the laws are obeyed in most societies. Because they can punish a person for not obeying the law, most people agree that laws should be fair and the same for everyone. But governments sometimes make laws that many people believe are not just. If many people believe this, people may lose respect for the law and may even disobey it. However, in a democratic society, the law itself has ways to change or get rid of these unjust laws. The following on justice comes from the World Martial Arts Congress, the Guardian Manual, Lessons in Martial Arts Leadership. The character traits the root of martial arts. Lesson, justice. Definition, a concern for justice, just behavior, peace, and genuine respect for people. The quality of being just, righteousness, equitableness, moral righteousness, to uphold the justice of the cause. In daily life, outside the training hall, injustice and disrespect seem the reality of daily life. Any guardian who would seek to eliminate all injustice is on a fool's errand. For most, conducting oneself in such a manner that one is known for being a person of righteousness, for exhibiting the quality of being just in one's daily life, and carefully selecting opportunities to uphold the cause of justice in a particular case would serve as a model for daily life. How the Bible speaks of justice. Justice in the Bible from internet search. Justice is a term used for what is right or as it should be. Justice is one of God's attributes and follows out of his holiness. Justice and righteousness are often used synonymously in the Bible. When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to the evildoers. Proverbs, verse 21, 15. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing in my faithfulness. I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Isaiah 61, 8. Justice in today's time. Currently, it would appear we live in a period of worldwide turmoil with calls for defunding of police, rules and regulations that seem to intrude into our personal daily lives in, in the name of safety and health concerns. One hears many calls for justice, justice for this group, justice for this person, justice for this action. There are even calls for justice for individuals who've ignored the law of consequence for their own actions and suffered the results. These such calls for justice are not true calls for justice, but are demands for exceptions to the rule of law or exception to one's actions because they do not fit the current social norm. Such calls for justice are the opposite of true justice. True justice is centered on internal calmness and genuine respect for people in life. In the martial arts, this internal calmness and respect among instructors and students generates a sense of peace and respect. The panel is now open for discussion. What are your thoughts and your experiences with justice? Please feel free to share your thoughts as well as additional topics you would like to see discussed. If you're interested in being a part of a Council of Black Belts, please let me know. We've added an additional topic to our discussions called What Would Soki Say? 
This segment will allow us to hear the thoughts from those no longer with us on this side of the dojo. If you have a sensei who is no longer with you on this earthly journey, please share his or her thoughts on the topic and will include such thoughts when the topic is discussed. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you enjoy the thoughts of the other members of the council. And please feel free to reach out to me any, anytime via email to idaru1982 at gmail.com. That's A-I-D-O-R-Y-U-1982 at gmail.com. Grandmaster Richard Hackworth shares his thoughts on justice. Martial means of or appropriate to war or warlike. It is part of the connection between martial arts and military training. Military justice, also military law, is a legal system, bodies of law and procedure that governs the conduct of the active duty personnel of the armed forces of a country. Why does the military have its own justice system? Because if a crime is committed on a military installation, the local government or country does not have jurisdiction. Also, the UCMJ covers combat situations which do not apply in the civilian world. Much of our code of conduct in the martial arts comes from the connection to the military. We have character virtues that support the strict code of conduct that gives us our sense of justice. We know that our sense of justice is governed by our code and must always act with justice in mind instead of revenge. As guardians, our actions must be in the service of justice. We are trained to protect ourselves, our families, and our community. Our goal does not allow us for us to act as administrators of punishment, but as servers of justice. We must not use any level of force that is beyond the level of the threat, and we must not use our skills to bully or harass others. As teachers of martial arts, we must apply justice in our class by using discipline. Discipline is done out of love for the student. Punishment is done out of anger. Our goal is to apply injustice in the form of discipline to correct the behavior. This is important because a student who is often punished but seldom corrected with a discipline will feel that he's being treated unjustly. Giving your students just and fair treatment can have a great impact on how they feel about their training. I know that I always felt closer to my teacher, who, teachers who treated everyone fairly and would naturally pay attention to each of their teachings because it was changing my life the better. I hope that as a teacher, I am remembered by my students as someone who always treated everyone justly. That without showing favoritism, I was able to have a positive impact on the lives of my students. Next. Master Young Smith shares his thoughts on justice. Justice is fair, just accountability for your actions. Jesus made it clear that biblical justice is not necessarily following the law. He explained that it is the spirit of the law rather than the law letter of the law. We are told in scripture to obey the laws of the land. Even though there's not a Bible verse that says this, but it's clear that we are to only follow laws that are just. Before his execution, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, German Lutheran, pastor of theology, anti-Nazi dissidents, 1906 to 1945, studied and wrote in depth in unjust laws of the land. As a martial artist and Christian pastor, justice is love. Love has accountability and forgiveness. The presence of a martial arts inserts peace, safety, love, and accountability to everyone in the room, whether they are aware of it or not. Sifu Keith Fanning shares his thoughts on justice. There are many types of justice, swift justice, rough justice, and good old fashioned hard justice. In a jiu-jitsu school I studied in, they had what was called right to a reply. This was reserved for when a training partner was consistently using power and technique and making sure he hurt you with every blow. You were allowed to call the instructor and quote, to 
quote, the right to reply. The instructor would make his judgment call, and if he thought you had a valid call, you were allowed to hit your training partner with the same blow and force he had hit you with. This was their form of justice. My father, on the other hand, believed if two students had an, an ax to grind, that the best place to sort it out was on the training floor in a no time limit sparring match. The match was over when one or both of the students agreed that they'd had enough, or in some cases, when blood was spilled. This was my father's form of internal justice. I've adopted both methods over the years and still believe they work. I know not everyone will agree with these methods, but I know there are many other softer approaches that can be employed, like sitting around a table and talking it out. But that being said, I came up in a martial arts system that was more about action than words. While I respect both, I choose to stay with the ones I know best. Next, we hear from Dr. Bodhi Sanders on his thoughts on justice. Justice is the process of deciding what is fair, what is right, and what is wrong. In the martial arts world, it appears that justice has taken a back seat to making money and appeasing the overblown egos of many so-called martial artists. In today's arts, martial arts culture, we see people being promoted in black, black belt rank, not according to their skills and their character development, but in an effort to maintain student enrollment numbers or simply for profit. There is little to no regard for the character of the student, and many times no regard for the student's actual martial arts skill set. Since my style is Shotokan karate, I will speak from a karate point of view. When Master Funakoshi was alive and teaching karate, it was not an easy task to be promoted to the rank of black belt. Master Funakoshi would actually not promote a student to the rank of black belt even if he had all the necessary skills for the rank of Shodan. He did not see that the student's character, if he did not see that the student's character had not also developed to a higher level. Master Okasaki, who I'm honored to be promoted by during my early days as a karateka, actually had to test with Master Funakoshi three times before he was promoted to the rank of Shodan. He stated that even though he had all the skills necessary for the rank of Shodan, Master Funakoshi would not promote him until he saw more character development. Master Ogasaki, regarded as one of the greatest martial arts masters of our time, and yet he had to train for years and test for his Shodan three times before he was awarded the rank of Shodan. To Master Fonakushi, Fonakushi, the main goal of karate was to seek the perfection of character, not simply the development of the physical side of karate. To many martial arts students today, this may seem like a miscarriage of justice. They would argue that karate is about self-defense and that rank promotion should be based on whether or not a student has developed the required physical skills for each bank belt rank. But that is not the way Master Funakoshi saw the issue. The third of Master Funakoshi's Ninjuku, or 20 precepts of karate, is one, one is practice karate must follow the way of justice. Master Funakoshi saw, saw justice as doing things the right way and felt that in order to do things right, one must be honest with himself. He felt that the person who is not honest with himself would not be honest with others. Knowing the path is different than walking the path. Some people may know how a true martial artist should conduct himself or herself, but that does not mean that they actually conduct themselves in that way. If someone does not conduct himself as a true martial artist, then he does not meet the true requirements of being a black belt or holding an advanced rank in the martial arts. This is the concept of justice in the martial arts. Those who are promoting students to the rank of black belt or advanced rank simply based on their memorization of katas or certain kicks, blocks, strikes, etc., without regard to the student's character, are not enacting justice in their dojo. You cannot be adhering to the concepts of justice if you are ignoring flaws in someone's character by promoting that student anyway. Master Funakoshi stated that spirit and mind are more important than technique. This is actually the fifth Nijunku. And this truism seems to have been forgotten in our current martial arts culture. 
I can give you an example after example of so-called martial artists who have paid for rank that they did not earn and paid for honors which they do not deserve. If you are selling rank or fraudulent martial arts Hall of Fame honors, then you are not honest or just. Likewise, if you are deliberately buying your belt rank or have Hall of Fame honors, then you are being dishonest with yourself as well as others, and you know that you are not being just. The martial arts community needs to get its house in order and get back to the focus on what is right and wrong. Instead of continuing to promote holy apparent, hollow appearance, appearance is meant to deceive new students and to increase marketing power. The martial arts were never supposed to be about making money. They were supposed to be about developing character and self-defense. Too many martial arts instructors or practitioners seem to have forgotten about the concept of justice and honesty and are instead focused on money and marketing. Character and justice matters, and it is time for the martial arts world to realize that spirit and mind are indeed more important than technique or superficial appearances. We hear from Rinchi Jeff Waters. Rinchi Waters' thoughts on justice. In our efforts to enforce justice upon society, let's take into consideration the plight of the unfortunate before passing judgment. Empathy is the best form of justice. We thank all the instructors that participate in this episode, and we look forward to being with you next month.